I'm Barbara Grauke and this is my glass studio in La Honda, California. I primarily work with glass powders on fiber paper. In this video I will be demonstrating how to make a thin sheet of colored glass using finely ground glass powders. I am using COE 96. First I pick a commercial mold and cut a piece of 1 8 inch fiber paper to the shape of that mold. I do use commercial molds which are heavily available in, in lots of different places and it makes it very simple to um, conform to this type of technique. I place the fiber paper on a portable kiln shelf and wet it slightly with a mister. Then I take the glass powder and sift the powder covering the entire sheet of paper. I actually use a full range of colors <laughs> because I never am in the same mood every day and it depends on what mood I'm in. I do like the blues and greens because it relates to a lot of the water that I'm actually very live very close to and I'll tend to go to the oranges and reds for more of an earthy connection. I use powder because anything that's more granulated will not sift properly and it won't move with the water. In this demonstration I am using one color over the whole paper but there is an infinite amount of possibilities as to what colors you can use and where you place those colors on the paper. I am spraying water onto the powder watching that it does not start to puddle. If you go too wet you can wick the excess water up with some toilet paper. If you are too dry the powder will not adhere to the paper. I like to crackle because I find it, it is so organic that I'll always be surprised at what I'm getting every time I play with it. I have gotten to the point where I know when I have really thick I can get really dense lines or when I'm doing very thin I can variate the, the, the colors and it's, it is a lot like nature so there's a lot of that. When I am satisfied with the look I place the paper back on the kiln shelf and put it in the kiln and fire it. The glass powder has now melted into lines and globs, leaving rounded edges. I am sifting another color on top of the melted glass and spraying that powder, pushing it into the crevices. The dry powder should flow over the soft edges of the melted glass into the crevices. I then cut a piece of clear glass that is the same shape as the mold and fiber paper I am working with. As an added technique, I have sifted white glass powder over a stencil on the clear piece of glass before placing it on the color sheet. You can get a lot of different stencils from commercial stencils to making your own stencils to the one like I have for the bread which is a crocheted item I probably got at the flea market. So there's a lot of options out there. This all goes back in the kiln for a second firing. Now that the glass is thick enough to handle, the fiber paper needs to be scrubbed off. You can use any rough sponge to start, and I like to sandblast the back side to get rid of any remaining residue. The edge of the piece will also be a little rough, so I take and grind the edge with a belt sander. You can use diamond pads with a little more elbow grease to achieve the same results. This step ultimately gives the piece a more finished look. I will then place the clean sheet of colored glass over the oval platter mold and slump it in the kiln. My kiln fires a little hot and retains the heat for a long time. Your kiln might have different characteristics that can affect the overall firing. 